Hey, what's up guys, Josh here. And today I'm very excited to talk about a new headphone entering the space from a company that is new to headphones. That company is Emotiva, and they've come out with something called the Airmotive GR1. I believe it stands for Graphene Lattice Reference 1, possibly shortened down to Graphene Reference 1. So uh, right up front, I'm not sure what relation this is gonna have to Graphene. I'm not sure exactly how they're implementing it or even if they are implementing it or if that's just the name of this particular device. You can see right away on the outside, it sort of has design influences of the molecular kind of hexagonal structure of Graphene. Uh, but further than that, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and talk about this headphone and my thoughts on Emotiva moving into the space. And then of course, my thoughts on the actual headphone itself. So as of right now, and things may change, the price point for this is gonna be about $300. So that's kind of where I'm judging this from. So the build is kind of good, kind of not. On one hand, it does feel quite good in the hand. It's got a good use of materials, lots of metal and wood. It actually feels quite nice. The comfort is something that is also pretty decent, though maybe not perfect. Uh, the pads don't have a whole lot of depth or width to them. So even me with small ears, I can definitely feel the pads kind of pressing on my ears a little bit. The headband, while uh, to your hand, it does feel quite well padded. On the top of your head, you actually do notice a bit of a hot spot and it feels almost flat. Now, speaking of the build of this headphone, um, you are going to see some proprietary things on here that Emotiva makes, and then you're gonna see some things that you've seen on other headphones. For example, uh, this headband structure is very similar to that of the M570 from Monoprice. And from what I'm being told, the drivers, the ear cups, the graphene coating, the 50 millimeter transducer, and the water cup pieces are unique to them. And I think the water cup pieces are this right here. So Emotiva does manufacture some of this. Okay, so I think right away, some people are gonna kind of see this as a turnoff. And I think it's a smart move for an introductory headphone. You know, you don't wanna overcommit, especially if you're spending a lot of R&D on a headphone already and you're entering into a space where you're not quite sure how it's gonna be received. I think it's a good idea to kind of dip your toe in slowly, though I do wish eventually they would get to fully manufacturing their entire headphone through and through. Now that is of course with the caveat that if you can't do it well in-house, then of course outsource to get a better version of the same piece. Like, you know, let's say they couldn't make a headman very well. Just for example, you know, outsourcing that is probably gonna be a good idea even longer term. Uh, but eventually I would like to see a completely in-house developed headphone. The headband extension here is quite crisp and it does feel quite nice. Um, this isn't going to fit extreme head sizes on the small and the large end. Uh, this is gonna be kind of a mid-range head size. So if you wear like, I would say a small men's hat, a medium men's hat or a large men's hat, you're gonna be good. But other than that, on either side, you're probably gonna not be so great. Uh, the bottom has 2.5 millimeter connectors on both the right and left sides. And this is okay in my opinion, 3.5 probably would have been preferable, but this cup size is, is pretty small. So far, I would rate the build uh, pretty decent. It's better than something like the 600 series, which is entirely made of plastic. And it does feel quite nice and notably more uh, substantial and kind of more, uh, I don't know, robust than that Monoprice series that I was talking about before. Overall build is pretty good. Okay, so the sound quality is where things get sort of interesting for me. And this is where you start to see some of the moves that Emotiva made in order to make this a very easy introduction into the audio world. And what do I mean by this? So they picked a very safe sound signature. They picked a warm, kind of bassy, punchier, fun sound signature. A little bit of top end, a little bit of sound staging, a little bit of mid range. You know, it's kind of all wrapped up in a very easily consumable package. And I think that this is the best move that they could have gone with. I think that even if they have a design goal that is perhaps eventually different, and I say that because the tuning of this headphone is very different than the tuning of their speakers. The design difference between those and the B1s and every Ema team of product that I've heard so far is very different in terms of sound signature than that of the GR1. That being said, I think the more kind of clinical approach to sound quality that the speakers take is not necessarily gonna be the best introductory headphone uh, sound signature when you're trying to get into a space. I think having a warm sound signature and then kind of working out from there and offering a variety is a great place to be. And I think warm sound signature is a great place to start. Okay, so this sound signature, right? It's warm, so it's got a lot of competition. There's lots of warm headphones. Is it any good at being a warm headphone? Yes, it is. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good and it's a 
Again, good introduction into this field. So the sound signature has a decent bit of clarity throughout. It's got a decent bit of resolution throughout. And I find myself enjoying the clarity of the system, even though it is a pretty dark sound to it. Now, when it comes to the trouble response, the trouble response uh, doesn't have any defining characteristics. Uh, and it kind of glides under the radar for the most part. It's not something that draws much attention to itself. In some ways, this is a good thing. In some ways, this is a bad thing. Uh, I like the fact that it's not a boosted, super strong V-shaped headphone. It's a little V-shaped, but not bad. Um, it's not kind of over the top with it and doesn't push out the high end too much to feign clarity or something like a lot of other headphones will do. So it seems to be working within what they can produce in the top end, and I do appreciate that. There are some air frequencies, but not a whole lot. Um, you're mostly gonna be finishing kind of the top end of instruments within their natural given range of what you would normally hear and not really think anything boosted beyond that. Now for some people, and maybe even the majority, this is gonna sound great. And even though it may not be as technically good, I think this is gonna be a very enjoyable sound signature through in and throughout for most people. Okay, the mid-range here is probably the area that I actually have a slight problem with and it kinda like, but kinda don't. So it has to do with the, the staging and the presence or lack of presence in the mid-range, specifically with vocalists. So something I talk a lot about in these reviews is the positioning and fullness or lack of fullness in a vocalist and how forward they can seem. This headphone is very good at actually backing things into a stage, which is kind of unique for the warmer sound signature. A lot of warm sound signatures are very intimate. This can be intimate for uh, kind of the top end and the low end, but it's not really intimate for the vocalist. So you don't really get a whole lot of immediate in your head, you know, super full presence for vocals like you can with some other headphones like in like a 600, but the bass response is a whole lot thicker and meatier than of the 600 series. Now, when it comes to the rest of the mid-range, I actually think that when it comes to a sound staging presentation for your music, instruments are actually really well benefited by the slight dip in the mid-range. And what I would consider to be a slight detriment for vocals is actually a slight benefit in this particular circumstance for the instruments within the mid-range. So uh, you kind of get things kind of backed up and not feeling like the recording was right on top of them, which depending on what you prefer is a good thing or a bad thing, but I consider it a decent thing here. Bass response is going to be this thing's kind of bread and butter. That's going to be what this is probably known for. Um, it's probably the best feature of this headphone and it's probably the entire reason why one would buy this. This is a dynamic driver in here and it sounds like a dynamic driver. So it's got a lot of bass and it's quite punchy, like really punchy. There's a little bit of bloat in the bass response, like a little bit of bloom into the other regions. It's not super, super clean. Like you can get on some slightly higher priced planars like the M1060C, but it is punchier than those. And it's got a kind of a thicker, meatier lower end. Now I know that some of the more hardcore audiophiles are going to be like, like, oh no, it's it's got bloated bass and it does, but it's fun. Uh, it, it's just, it's a fun headphone. I think this is probably the appropriate sound signature again to go through with Emotiva is not try and press graphs, just make a headphone that's enjoyable to listen to. And that's what you get with this headphone. Now the bass hits low, it hits hard. So you can get all the way down to 20, 30 Hertz with this, no problem. And then again, there's that slight bass boost between about like 70 to maybe 120 and then 120 upwards. to so like 300 region uh, is pretty clean. Uh, there is a decent amount of texture. The timbre characteristics of the bass response are good, but not astonishing to me. But ultimately, this is a headphone that is made for someone who really wants to hear a lot of bass and doesn't care so much for the super hyper technical stuff. Okay, so imaging and soundstage. And this is the weird aspect to this headphone that I didn't actually expect was the warm sound signature paired with decent sound staging. Now, the imaging is very good. Uh, along with kind of almost every headphone nowadays, you can get you can get pretty good imaging on just about everything. Uh, but the soundstage width is actually fairly wide uh, and does soundstage quite nicely. Um, it's definitely not the best for the price, uh, but it's not terrible. And it's better than you would expect for a super warm headphone. I think a way that I can kind of describe the, the relationship between the bass and the open soundstage is that this is an open back headphone that has the bass response of a closed back headphone. It sounds thick and meaty and super robust, but then the top end and the mid range have space to it 
and they have kind of a, a flexibility of position out into the ranges. Now, another thing to say about the bass is that while it is strong, it's not overwhelmingly strong. It's not something that is just outshining everything else that this headphone has and that all this has to offer is bass. That is definitely not the case. It's got really, really strong bass performance, but it's also got a decent bit of mid-range forwardness and a decent bit of treble forwardness to kind of keep up and feel like it's kind of playing on the same level, though you can tell that the main feature is the bass response. Okay, so my conclusion here. Uh, this is not a headphone that's gonna knock your audio file socks off, right? It's not gonna blow the measurement guys away. It's not gonna be a new reference standard for studios around the world. It's not gonna be anything like that. This is a fun, easy to drive headphone. It's a warm sound signature, decent bit of sound stage. This is gonna be great for things like R&B and rap. Basically any music that has a heavy amount of rhythm bass uh, or uh, soundtracks to movies, you know, things like Hans Zimmer, which use a lot of big instruments, a lot of big soundstage, but also a lot of bass. This actually displays fairly well. Now I would also say that you can totally use this for kind of casual, uh, fun gameplay, uh, for, you know, basically any game. This is actually going to sound pretty good. It's not going to be too bright, uh, to where it, gunshots are going to be killing your ears. Um, but it is going to be nicely thick in the low end and kind of, you know, really immersive from that point of view. So before I wrap this up, I would love to see more headphones coming out of Emotiv. Uh, and ultimately, I would really like to see an HEDD competitor, especially with how commonly uh, Emotiv uses AMT tweeters. I would like to see them put that technology into a headphone, maybe even start with planar or something like that. I think would be really, really cool. As far as an introduction into the space, I think that this is a very safe and smart move on their part. Uh, and I think they're going to get a lot of fans for uh, the sound signature that this currently offers. Okay. I'll leave links to everything in the description down below. And until the next video, my name's Josh signing off.